Okay, so uh, hello everyone. My name is Konstantinos Varskevas, and uh, I'm going to present you uh, I'm, uh, our work uh, with titled Underwater Detection of Ancient Poetry Research Using Deep Learning. I'm a research associate at the uh, Information Technologies Institute Thessaloniki, Greece, which is a part of the Center for Research and Technology, Hellas. Um, this is a work. This work is part of a larger project called uh, U Archeorov, which stands for Underwater Archaeological ROV, a Remotely Operated Vehicle. Um, this project aims to construct an, an underwater vehicle uh, to assist in the underwater archaeological field field research. This uh, has uh, two two main tasks. The one is uh, to survey uh, a test case scenario. Uh, by serving mean that uh, this uh, ROV will assist uh, archaeologists with uh, computer vision systems to uh, verify and check whether there are new findings uh, underwater or not, or uh, uh, create 3D maps of uh, archaeological sites. Also, uh, it could uh, ex excavate a test case scenario with uh, a robotic arm that will be um, uh, mod modified uh, on top of the rover. Um, more details about the rover, it will be capable of uh, 120 meters oper operation depth. It will have a, a haptic robotic arm with a force or torque sensors uh, on top of it to measure how much force it is applying to the findings to the objects where the while the, it is um, ma making the excavations. It could uh, lift a uh, 10 kilograms uh, capacity uh, load, and uh, it uh, has on board an stereoscopic camera to wait for in the mapping of 3D mapping, to creating 3D maps of the archaeological site. Um, now, the detecting of pottery shards. Uh, as I said earlier, this um, uh, ROV will help um, archaeologists uh, make the excavations and the surveys of certain uh, underwater uh, archaeological findings. One specific archaeological site that we're interested in is the shipwreck near uh, the Modi Island in Greece. This is Mycenaean uh, shipwreck of the 13th to 12th century B uh, BC that has been excavated since, since 2009. Uh, its findings consist mostly of uh, um, ceramic pottery which is uh, in uh, shards. Uh, it, 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 they have been destroyed, and they are found. Being, they are being found in uh, fragments. So, from this excavation site, videos uh, of uh, excavations were used to train our model. Um, in order to train our model, we had uh, first to create the data set. This data set um, consisted of the frames of the videos that they said earlier. And uh, in order to avoid um, making creating two similar images, we chose to extract uh, an image from each video every 10 frames instead of every single frame. This way, we produced uh, 3,500 3 images approximately. Um, some of them, however, were not uh, showing uh, clearly the shards we were interested in training or were blurred due to a uh, abrupt movement of the camera or were too dark or too bright. So from these three and a half thousand images, uh, only two and a half thousand images uh, were manually labeled with a single class. And uh, after the manual labeling, uh, there was the, pr the procedure of uh, the splitting the images between the training, validation and testing images. This is done uh, to separate the images that will be used for training of the of the model, uh, with the images that um, from the images that they will be used to to test the, the model later, to validate and test the model later. Uh, so for our model, we chose to to use the you only look once or YOLO for short. Um, this is um, an object detection model that uh, was developed by Joseph Redmond and many other scientists uh, in 2016. And it was the first um, single shot uh, or one stage method uh, that produced real-time 
uh, object detection of its time. Um, uh, this uh, they, they achieved uh, they achieved that by producing the, predicting the bounding boxes directly on the image with one uh, propagation of the network. Um, that mean that meant that there were no uh, sliding window techniques needed to pro to achieve the object detection. So the detection was real time. In more detail, the the way the Yolo network works is that um, the image is firstly divided into discrete cells. Uh, then the the model pro predicts uh, bounding boxes for each cell. Uh, where the center of uh, each bounding box uh, corresponds to uh, a certain cell. Then it calculates a confidence value for every of these, every one of these uh, bounding boxes. Um, now I have this method, this uh, procedure that knows where on a specific image an, uh, an object should be. And um, the confidence value shows us how sure the network is that uh, there is an object in a specific um, bounding in a specific cell without knowing what type of object, what class of object it uh, should be. Um, then there is a parallel um, task with this uh, with this one, which is the calculation of the classes and the, the creation of the classification mask. This is a class probability map that shows us uh, that uh, if there is something, uh, some object in a specific cell, then it must be an object of a certain class. So combining these two procedures, we have the final detections by reducing the number of bounding boxes to only the bounding boxes with a high enough uh, confidence value and corresponding these uh, bounding these remaining bounding boxes with their uh, uh, specific um, classes uh, from the task probability map we get our final detections after the first uh, version of uh, yolo there were a lot uh, uh, newer versions which were better uh, in many terms the most popular uh, of the newer versions of yolo were, were the yolo version 3 which had a better performance in detection accuracy and inference speed. Then the YOLO V5 um, introduced us to many different size models uh, of the YOLO, uh, from nano to extra large, uh, which enabled us to prioritize accuracy or speed, depending on our needs. For example, if we wanted um, the best performance and the best uh, accuracy and recall, we should use um, a uh, very large um, version of YOLO. Whereas if we wanted uh, a fast model that would be deployed in a small machine with uh, limited uh, programming, uh, limited uh, computational capabilities, we should use them, we should sacrifice the performance and use the smaller versions of YOLO, such as YOLO Nano or YOLO Small. And then we have the YOLO version 8. Uh, as far as I know, this is the, the last, uh, the, the most recent version of YOLO, which produces uh, better performance in all model sizes from nano to extra large. And this is the model we chose to use. Uh, it also uh, uses specifically the, uh, the PyTorch framework, which makes it a lot easier to, to train and uh, evaluate. So every um, object detection model needs uh, its data set uh, to have um, needs to have its data set in a specific format. Um, all data sets have uh, the images and their respective labels in uh, separate files. These separate files can be of many uh, types and uh, formats. Uh, YOLO specifically requires each image to be accompanied by an a txt file with the same name and um, uh, this file contains for um, the, the the information of each bounding box uh, in order to train the network with this image so uh, this txt file has um, in every line of these txt files um, represents the, uh, each, every bounding box so we have a uh, 
one line of the txt file for each bounding box so in this image you see three bounding boxes we have three lines on the respective uh, txt file uh, this txt file contains the um, number of the class so for example if this is the the class one or the class two of objects we have for for this specific scenario we have only one class so all the classes are uh, zero practically the number is zero and then we have the coordinates of the center of each bounding box these values uh, in the yolo uh, network are represented uh, normalized to the size of the image so for example if we have a bounding box with its center being at the center of the image and um, the coordinates of the center of the bounding box would be 0 0.5 and 0 for the x and 0 0.5 for the y respectively um, similarly the width and height and are then written in the same line uh, for the bounding box uh, again they are normalized for the image uh, image size then we have some YAML files uh, for the configuration and the class names, which the network see, sees, reads, and uh, then uh, proceeds with the training. So for the detection of pottery shards, uh, we first had to create the data set, as I said earlier, for, from the images uh, of the videos we extracted. Then we have to train the object detection model, and then we had to val validate the results. The validation uh, happens by running the trained network um, over the validation set of the images, which the network has not seen before. And this way we can calculate the, the performance metric we want. So specifically for our YOLO V8 training, we trained uh, all the versions of the model, uh, of, of the YOLO V8 model from the nano version up to the large. And we trained all the models for 150 epochs, meaning that um, every image of the data set passed 150 times, all the images of that set passed 150 times from the, from the network. And then the training of this type happens in batches. We define the number of images that are being sent into the network at the same time. By using a larger batch size, we have um, uh, smoother graphs and uh, faster training in theory. So we try to use the maximum batch size we could uh, considering our memory because we had a limited memory with, with our uh, systems. So the smaller networks um, could uh, easily uh, be trained with a batch size of 64. So 64 images at a time were inserted in the network. But the larger um, models uh, could only use um, four or six uh, images at a time before crashing due to memory limitations. After our uh, initial training, we uh, tried to remove the, the, the images from a certain video of those we had uh, from the excavations uh, because we uh, suspected that the models would be uh, overfitted. The, 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 this means that the images are too similar and the model is uh, too specifically trained for the conditions of the images and uh, it cannot um, learn any diversity from from, from, the, from the images it is seeing. So uh, the results we're going to show you are the results from the training with less images, with the images uh, of uh, a certain video being removed, and then all the performance metrics were produced by uh, the images of the specific video that was removed from the training. So uh, the validation of uh, any uh, of the detection model involves uh, some uh, performance metrics. The most important metrics um, we're interested in are the mean average precision and the average recall. The average precision uh, essentially is the ratio of the true positive detections relative to the to all the positive detections that happened. So it is the, um, the number of true positives Oh, uh, from all the positives that uh, were produced uh, in the inference. So true positives over uh, true positives and false positives. Uh, 
average recall is the um, the ratio of the true positive detections uh, relative to the all the detections that should have happened. So it is true positives over true positives and false negatives, the detections that didn't happen successfully it should have happened. These are the two most important metrics that we want in this situation. So in this table, you can see the results from uh, all the models we tested of the YOLO V8 architecture. We have the uh, nano, small, medium, and large. As you can see, the larger models um, were not significantly better in performance, both in precision and recall from the smaller models. Uh, however, we can see that the inference speed, as, uh, as, as it should, it is uh, decreasing. Uh, it is decreasing when we use larger models, so the milliseconds increase. Um, this is why we chose to, sele to select the small version of YOLO V8 for our purposes, because as you can see, it has the largest uh, precision and recall, although, uh, albeit by a little from the larger one, the larger models. However, it is uh, still very fast, not quite as fast as the nano model, but it is uh, uh, closing the, the fastest speed possible with this network. Um, and since it will be deployed in a mobile platform, in an ROV, as I said earlier, this uh, was the best choice for us. So with the validation process, we also get some uh, performance curves. Um, specifically, we have the precision over confidence curve. Um, we should expect the precision to rise with uh, um, higher confidence values because, as I said earlier, the precision is the is how many of the detected uh, objects were actually true. So if we we uh, put a threshold or, our, or our, on our confidence value uh, high enough, all the detections are true. So we say to the model that I want you only to produce the detections that you are 0.7%, for example, um, that you think are true. So if in this case, this graph shows us that if the model thinks that um, it, it detects something with a confidence of uh, 60, 65%, then all, the, all of the time this, these uh, results are actually true. Um, similarly, we have the recall over confidence curve and we should expect the recall to fall to, to decrease with uh, increasing confidence because, um, as you remember, the recall is the ratio of the true positive detections over all the detections that should have happened. So uh, if we increase the confidence threshold, we increase the chances that something is not being detected because uh, it's being detected with a lower confidence value. So it is very interesting to plot the precision over the recall in these situations where we can um, clearly see um, the characteristic shape of the PR curve. And we, from this curve, we can select the confidence threshold uh, for the situation that we want, for, for the use case that we want. For example, if uh, we are in a critical situation where every detection matters and we have to be sure that every detected object is truly positive, then we should um, choose a very high confidence value in order to have a, a larger uh, uh, precision, even if we have um, low recall, I should say. Um, on the other hand, if we don't, in, uh, if we are not in a critical situation and the detections don't matter a lot, we can, um, but we want a lot of detections, we can use a low confidence threshold and have the recall be quite high so we can have all the detections we want. Uh, here you can see some of the examples of the validation batches that we used from the small uh, version of the model. Here I should say that every since we selected the small version of the model to, to be used uh, in our purposes, we I will show you the graphs and the results of 
the small model. Uh, similar graphs and uh, images were produced from the uh, from the other models, but uh, since we chose the small one, the these are not in, that important. So uh, here on the left, we have a batch of four images uh, uh, that are being detected uh, as amphora fragments uh, with a good performing uh, uh, results, as you can see. And in co in contrast, um, on the right, we have a batch which uh, successfully detects most of the fragments, but uh, we have some false positives here and there, and specifically in this photo and, and the one below it. Now I have another example of a, a good uh, performing and uh, not so good performing um, uh, image of the of the videos. So uh, these were the images that were reserved for only for the testing of the model, and we ran through them through the trained model just for illustration purposes. You can see here that some of the fragments are most of the fragments, I should say, uh, they are being detected with quite a high uh, confidence value, uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.5. Whereas in the right image, we can see that there are being detected two fragments successfully. However, we have uh, another two uh, detections that are, seem to be false positive because they detected rocks as fragments. So here I have a video that I hope plays uh, uh, well. Uh, this is the video of the YOLO version 8 small model that was trained with the with less images, without the images of this specific video. So these uh, the images that were produced from this video were not used for the training and were only used for validation and for the testing. So for the video you see here, if we play Again, from a specific uh, time, you, you can see that if the, when the image, when the camera stops over the object, uh, the object's uh, detection splits into the fr uh, fragments because um, we didn't train the model to be uh, detecting the whole uh, pottery, but the pottery sheds, because most of the pottery sheds were destroyed in the shipwreck and they are in this form. So, and uh, with this video, we have the conclusions. Um, in our purposes, the, the small version of the model was the best fitting model because it uh, showed good detection results, good uh, detection performance, and very high speed. Uh, it, we can confidently say, see, uh, say that the speed is being considered real time. Um, with, uh, in this case, we don't... Uh, bother with the false positives and we prefer them over the false negative detections because as i said in the beginning this will assist the archaeologists in excavations and will um, provide some guidance to where they should search not that they, we want to have uh, absolute uh, detections and uh, say say the archaeologists that we are sure about an object we just want to suggest them to look uh, better in a specific location. So we should uh, uh, set the threshold, uh, confidence threshold very low in order to produce a lot uh, of uh, false positives. We don't care about them, but we don't want to produce any false negatives. So um, we suggest uh, for future research um, that uh, a larger data set will be used and more diverse data set because we saw that we had a lot of uh, overfitting especially in the um, larger models so with a better data set and more diverse data set we could achieve better results even with the um, with a larger network such as with the yolo large or the yolo extra large model and um, which could also fine tune um, the model's parameters to achieve better results but um, another very interesting improvement for, for our research is the use of online learning, where the models could um, uh, be trained again to learn a new class without forgetting the old one. So we know that the shipwreck has also a stone anchors um, and not only a pottery shards. Uh, so we could, uh, in this way, we could retrain our model to learn the, the a new class such as stone anchors without forgetting the uh, 
the old uh, classes that uh, were learned. Uh, that's uh, our presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Feel free to ask me any questions if you have.